uh, up here largely under the radar because, well, it just is. But it, are you still as fascinated by it as I am? This is day 30. Yeah, it's been really an incredible trial to cover, to uh, provide legal analysis, uh, analysis for. It's really tense. We do. Last Friday, I was in front of the tent team, sitting behind our attendants. It is a fascinating trial. I, mean, I think it's fascinating for, on a number of levels, one of which is that he may not be convicted, and that although many people presume that he's guilty, the case against him has some aspects of it that are weak, and uh, it will be a while before it can. That's for sure. So you were you were actually in the courtroom too, but I was last Friday. I was I was there. Actually, with one of my students. Uh, sort of experiential learning. I love to watch a uh, trial in action, and then uh, it's fascinating. What really extremely good lawyer. It's really is educational to watch this caliber of attorney to make one of them. Where where is your line of thinking? in Because you know what's funny is an outsider. People just watch the news, and, and the news is the news. Everybody's got a slant and take and a reason to report what they report. But but if if it were up to CNN and, and Fox and, and and everybody else, uh, this guy would have been in jail before the trial started, convicted, no jury. That's how they present this, this evidence. But where where do you, do you think this is at now in the full term of of guilty or uh, or you know you're good to go? Well, I think there's a lot of evidence that he was at the crime scene when Odin Lloyd died, and that's pretty damning, where it's hard to explain away somebody's presence at the crime scene. Uh, so that, that's one aspect of the case I heard Fernandez, but there are a couple of things that may allow him to be found not guilty, one of which is that even if he was at the crime scene, it doesn't mean that he actually killed Odin Lloyd, because there's two other men, there's Ernest Ball and Carlos Ortiz, the alleged accomplices, but one of them could have been the shooter, and it's not clear what role Hernandez would have had at the crime scene. In Massachusetts, you can still be convicted of a crime if you're part of what's called a joint venture, where you share the intent of committing a crime and you help carry it out, but his presence alone isn't enough to show joint venture, so there's that. And the other issue is that we still don't know what the motive would be. Aaron Hernandez was hanging out with Odin Boyd two nights prior to Odin Boyd's death, and and they were having apparently a good time smoking marijuana. They stayed over at Aaron Hernandez's sort of quote unquote flop house where they got high, drunk, and it doesn't look like there, there was any agreement between them. Now, there is evidence that Hernandez was staring at Odin Boyd at a nightclub, but you know, that could have been a number of people who looking to a dance floor. So, you know, it's not a full, full group case. There's just certainly like, a lot of evidence that he was at the crime scene and that he may have contributed, but. Uh, this isn't a case where you do your very heavy and you think, oh, he's definitely guilty. You think there's a chance he's guilty, but at least as of now, I don't think jurors are going to start. What does Hernandez's girlfriend play? What role does she play in all this? She plays a potentially huge role. Cheyenne Jenkins uh, is, has been staying with Hernandez for years. They're engaged to be married. She and Hernandez live in the same home in Massachusetts. Prosecutors believe that Jenkins has played an instrumental role in the case. Specifically, they think that after Odin Lloyd's murder, Hernandez comes home at about 3.30 a.m., hands Diana the murder weapon, and then the next day uh, tells her, destroy it, get rid of it, get it out of the house because the cops are coming. And that he was using code language to give her that instruction. There's surveillance video from Hernandez's own home of Jenkins leaving the house through the garage with a garbage bag. Now, it could just be a garbage bag, but she puts it into her car and it drives off. So the garbage bag seems to have a box base in it, which could suggest it was an ammunition box. Again, we're speculating. We don't know for sure. But Jenkins, at least as of now, will not testify. Prosecutors gave her immunity, which means if she goes on the stand and says, I did all these things I just tried, she wouldn't be charged as an accomplice or in conspiracy. But, at least as of now, she won't testify. And if they put her on the stand, can't have the Fifth Amendment. Normally, you can plead the Fifth Amendment, and I'm not going to make a statement that incriminates me, but when you've been given immunity, you no longer can incriminate yourself. So that would leave her with the choice of either not answering questions and the judge holding her in contempt of court, where she would go off to jail for the rest of the trial, or murdering herself, potentially just lying, or telling the truth. Maybe she had nothing to do with it. Or say, I don't recall, which is another device which witnesses sometimes use. So whose witness is she then? The state, would like, the state would like to call her. Commonwealth of Massachusetts intends to call her. 
but every single she is given is that if they do that, she will not discriminate. So why would she? Why would she be granted immunity? Is she granted immunity based on the fact if she testifies, or is she just granted immunity no matter what? If she testifies, the reason why they gave her immunity is they don't want her to take this message. That they want to take away that power of her that she would normally have as a U.S. citizen, where you you're not obligated to make a statement under oath that incriminates you. You lose that power if you've been given immunity. What's the most um sorry, Michael McCann, legal analyst for uh, SportsIllustrated.com. What's the most damning piece or pieces of evidence so far uh, for Aaron Hernandez? So I think uh, some of the damning evidence includes very strong evidence that he was with two men uh, and also Odin Lloyd right before Odin Lloyd's death. There's a lot of surveillance video of Hernandez, you know, seemingly right after the time Odin Lloyd was killed, uh, walking around his house with the alleged accomplices. There's footwear and pressure evidence that reportedly puts Hernandez in the crime scene, although Hernandez's lawyers would say there are real issues with that evidence, but nonetheless, there's evidence suggesting he was at the crime scene. Was his gun there? His gun was on a shell casing. And then, let me see, the gun is basically there. So Hernandez clearly rented a car. And that car appears to have been used to transport Odin Lloyd. And then later on, a few hours later, about 5 a.m., when they get home, Hernandez returns to the rental car to Enterprise Rental Car. And the manager at Enterprise cleans up the car the next morning. She finds a shell casing, a piece of shoe bubble gum, and some other things. And she, you know, maybe even hindsight is sort of prosecution regresses. Instead of calling the police, she threw them out into the dumpster. And when she threw them out into the dumpster, the gum joined with the shell casing. She then watched the news later and noticed that there was a murder, and she called the police. I don't know if there's anything to do with it, but I threw the stuff into the dumpster. The police go to the dumpster, and by that point, the shell casing has been uh, joined with the bubble gum. Hernandez's DNA is allegedly on the bubble gum. Now his DNA is on the shell casing. His lawyers are saying, can't assume that the shell case is anything to do with Hernandez because the gum, the, the DNA on the gum would have transferred to the shell case. Um, Michael, we've got about 20 seconds here. Will we see Belichick or Brady at this trial? Possibly. There's certainly a chance they will. They're really not that important in terms of the case. I mean, obviously, they're celebrities. You know, they would get a lot of attention by virtue of who they are, but they, they don't possess a great deal of information that's going to advance the case. They make a lot of purposes in the timeline, but they're not going to be important witnesses other than the fact that, you know, they're Bill Belichick and Bob Kraft, but right now they're not getting to on. Listen, really appreciate your time. Michael McCann, legal analyst for SI.com. Thank you very much. Hopefully we can uh, catch up with you next week and find out what's going on. You got it. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, Sue. Uh, 824. George's news coming up Woo. at 8.33. What do you have for us, George? Uh, Burger King coming up with a new fragrance.